My name is Zu Dietzenbach. I am a change management consultant. I have worked for a Fortune 500 company for nearly two decades. And five of those years, I was fully dedicated to manage change, changes of all sizes, big, small, related to people, process, and tools. But now I am fulfilling my mission. I go from company to company assisting organizations, assisting leaders to implement successful change. And today, we are going to spend the next few minutes talking about a secret ingredient that is essential to communicate change. Why sometimes we talk to someone or we, we, we say something to somebody and this person don't understand or even they misunderstand us. Have you ever sent a text message or an email to somebody just to learn later that they didn't read it at all? Is that a little bit frustrating, isn't it? In reality, we have to communicate all the time. And communication, it's interweaved in everything we do. And I have to tell you that if you learn the secret that we are going to share, that I'm going to share with you today, you are going to find that making small changes to the way we communicate can favor you. The outcome of your communication is going to be much better. Communication, we are bombarded with communication all the time. We, 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 whatever we go, those are right there. Billboards, Facebook news feed, phones ringing, kids fussing, people complaining, TVs is blaring, radio ads, paper in the mail with communication, it's everywhere. And I read once, I don't know if that's real or not, but it was interesting. This article said that we receive an average 35,000 pieces of information every day. I don't know if you do receive 35,000 pieces of information every day, but I can tell you that we receive a ton of information, more information than uh, our brain can, can process. And you know what happens? Our brain will just sort it out. It's like pretty much our outlook filter. Our brain will receive all this information and everything that it perceives as spam or not important, it pushes to the side. And so we can focus in what is really important. I'm okay with that, right? I, I don't wanna remember or process every piece of information that I receive. But the problem becomes when we are part of the information that the brain is just tuning out. It's when we become the noise that people are not paying attention to, especially when we are communicating change. When we want people to change, when we are promoting change, communication is key. Communication, I always say that communication is in the heart of any successful change. Because for people to change, they need to understand why they are changing, what are the risks of not changing, why should they care, how would that change benefit them. And when they learn those things, they are much more likely to decide to change because change is a personal decision. I cannot make people change, but I can influence their decision to change. And we do that through communication. That's our communication efforts that will allow people to have that understanding of what needs to be changed and how and why so they can change. But if they are not paying attention or if our communication is not flowing the way it should, you know what is going to happen? It's going to result in resistance. And believe me, resistance is the worst outcome of any change. When people are resistant to change, you would not get into your desired state. But 
What is communication actually? I had to go to the dictionary and find a definition. And I find this definition. Communication is the importing or exchanging of information and a means of connection between people. When I read this definition, I found two interesting aspects of communication. The first one, importing of ex or exchange of information. So I'll pull out the word exchange. And the second one is means of connection between people. So I'll highlight connection on the second part. I see then communication as two things. We have exchange of information and connection between people. I would say that the exchange of information is the tangible part of communication. And the connection, that is the intangible part of information. If you think about it, all the information that we receive has the physical aspect. What is the tangible aspect of communication? I would say, is the if you are writing, it's the text that is well written, that has proper grammar, that is well structured, that has a nice appearance, that has a good content. All of that are tangible pieces that you deal when you are communicating and this is very important to have it very well done. And I think that all the information that we receive, including those messages that we either delete or we either tune out, they have that physical aspect, that tangible aspect very well done. But not all, not all communication that we receive has that special ingredient that is connection. When there is connection in your communication, connection between people, your communication becomes very effortless. But if connection is not present, it doesn't matter what you are saying or how beautiful your tangible aspect is, it won't work because people will not pay attention. People will not listen to it. We know that relationship may help you in many ways, who you know, right? And I would apply this rule again in communicating, building connections. You have to know your audience. I worked for this Fortune 500 company for nearly 20 years. Five years I was ex exclusively dedicated to manage change. And I have to tell you that all my efforts on um, all the interventions promoting change and promoting information and sharing information and communicating with my audience those were very successful. And I'm not saying that to brag about it, it's just an example, because I had a very close relationship with my audience. I was responsible for a group of two organizations that had about 2,000 people, and people all over the globe. But somehow I was able to build that closeness with people in such a way that every time I would send them a communication, I would receive feedback. I would hear them. I would understand what they want to hear, why they didn't like this information, how they wanted to be communicated to. In all those aspects, I would built in my communication. So when I would send out, when I would share, when I would implement, when I would do any, any intervention, they would just be on it. And the same advice I give to you. If you are expecting people to change their behavior, maybe you are promoting a culture change. Maybe you are changing some processes in the workplace. Maybe you are expecting people to do things differently some way or somehow. You need to build connection with them first. And then you may ask, how do I connect? It is, of course, 
connection is not built overnight. It's built, you know, across a period of time. It is not going to be built uh, right away, but if you take time to get to know your people, to understand what they like or what they want to hear, and then you take that feedback and you course correct all your actions, you are in a path for succeed to succeed. Because if you don't know what your people want to know, or you just guess, or you think you know, you have a much greater risk of failure. And connecting with the audience, it's so much easier than you think. It is pretty much getting to know them. What they like, what they dislike, what motivate them, what they want to hear. Let's say you are promoting, you have an organization and you'd like to encourage employees to do more community service. And that is something that they need to decide to do because it's a volunteer work and they will commit some of their time. And you want to have that behavior change, that, that, that culture in your organization. And then let's say you start telling that, hey, next week we are opening opportunities to come and volunteer in an animal shelter, for example. And then you send information and pictures of animals and you tell people how nice it is and, and, and how beneficial that would be for the animals and for themselves. But you don't get people to do that. Why? Then you decide to walk around and talk to them. Hey, I sent that communication about volunteering to an animal shelter and what do you think? Well, I think it is good, but uh, animal shelter is not my passion. I prefer to work on the outdoors and maybe do some planting trees or planting a garden or something of that nature. Bingo! Now you know what your people like. Now you know what motivates them. And now you can tailor your communication to get them excited about change. Do you see how it happens? Without you knowing your audience, you cannot build connection. In connection, it only happens on the personal level, on the emotional level. That exchange needs to happen and it most likely will happen in that one-on-one. -on -one. Why sometimes our, our even the computer knows what is spam because if stores and businesses and people are just sending random emails to you, they know that don't matter. And we, our brain, also know that certain information that we are not connected to are not as important. So if you are promoting change and you would like your people to get into that desired state, get into that vision that you have, you need to create connections and assist them and provide them what they need and how they need to change. And remember that communication, it's not sending a pretty email. Like I said, it's not only the tangible aspect. It is not having a beautiful, beautiful newsletter full of colors and nice font. Again, that's the tangible aspect that is very important, but what's going to make your people tune in to you, what's going to make your audience not only pay attention to what you're saying, but stay with you until you finish your message, it's going to be that connection. People like to relate. People like to feel important and, and, and they like to feel like they matter. And when you connect with them, when you ask questions, and when you implement those changes based on feedback, that's how they feel. And you build that relationship in such a way that people will want to know what you have to say. Sometimes we send information and we check the box, hey, I sent that email, hey, I mail that newsletter, we are communicating, not necessarily. Remember that the definition we gave, it's an exchange between people. What is exchange? It's that give and take. 
until you send the information and you receive that acknowledgement that acknowledgement that the information was understood you haven't communicated yet if you send that email and people delete it you did not communicate because you know whose responsibility it is to make sure the information is well received the way that is expected it's our responsibility it's our responsibility to do that so make sure whenever you are communicating you are not only promoting empty information you are not only listing things but you are really reaching out to human beings and providing all that they need to succeed because you know them you know what matters to them and you know what will excite them connection to me is the secret ingredient not only to communicate effectively connection to me is the secret ingredient to build strong relationships to raise kids to be a good leader is the secret ingredient to be fulfilled not only as a professional, but as a human being. We live our lives so detached from everything. It's hello, hi, please, thank you, have a good day. And we don't know each other. You don't know what motivates people. We don't know what is going on inside. We don't really know what people need. And I made it my mission to go a little deeper. I don't like to be superficial. I like to know people. And this is something that became so natural to me. But I found that when we meet people, when we see people, they open up to us. They hear us because people love to be seen and heard. And when you are promoting change, change is a challenge by itself. No one really likes to change, but we can make the process much easier, much more pleasant, much smoother if we care more and we start to listen to each other and we start to address the gaps, to address the concerns, to make them feel that they matter, that they are important and that they will, and that we will do all that we can to assist them. So communication was the secret ingredient of connection, might be the answer to any of the challenges that you face in your interactions or implementing change. I really hope that going forward, will find ways to get to know people better, get to know what motivates them, get to know what excites them, and I'm sure you will experience much more effective results. Thank you for your time today.